Hello everybody and welcome to a yet another Transformers review with me, Graham. Um, today I'm going to be doing one, well, a figure that I got from the post about three weeks ago. Uh, I got it from Japan, it cost me 20 quid. Um, and that is Universe 2.0 Overkill. Now I believe it was also uh, coming under the subheading of Hasbro to exclusives, but I think it was only exclusive in the Asian markets. I think it was the only place where you could actually get this guy officially. Um, let me just show you the box quickly. He comes in this really gorgeous box. Now then, um, here he is. Uh, it is just also. Oh, there we go. Let me just adjust this camera a little bit. No, it's not the camera I need to do. It's my thing just behind there. That's better. Now I can see everything. Right there we go. That's his box, and it comes in this gorgeous black box. Now then, he just has the drawn picture on one side. We turn it around. And we have a picture of the figure itself in there. It's pretty darn good. I like the box. Now then, if we open it up, because it comes with a window box, there we go. That's where the figure would be, just in there. And then on this side, we have his bio and stats. Now, I'm just going to read you the bio, because I really do like the bio on this guy. <clears throat> Formerly bound to Soundwave as partner and slave, Overkill was often overlooked by enemy and ally alike. Recently, however... He has overcome his diminutive size, reinstalling his cerebral circuitry in a larger, more dangerous body. Now he is free to indulge his destructive whims, stomping cars flat, snapping tractor trailers in half with his jaws, and being generally terrifying. Now that's frightening. Nah, no, not really. Um, I like the first part, the second part just gets a bit silly, but I do like that as well. Um, like I say, that's his box. I just want to show you one or two other things. At the time, I got it with this guy. And this is a Universe as Roto exclusive drag strip. Um, I wanted these two mainly because I didn't like the Optimus Prime Megatron that was released as well. I mean, they're not very good figures. I've seen some reviews of them. Um, is it Evil or Junior done a really good one of uh, the Megatron? And I think Mush Moshman69 done one as well. And good reviews, but just um, I'm not overly keen on the actual figure itself. I mean, I did have its first incarnation, which was. Um, the Classics Megatron or Optimus Prime 2 pack. I only got that because I like G2 Megatron and it's kind of a homage to that. Anyway, let me just show you this guy in the box. I think it looks really good. There we go. And now obviously he is a repaint of um, Classics Mirage. And like I say, I like the Stunticons, that's why I wanted this guy. There we go. Right, let me put him down. I'm just going to show you one more thing quickly because I got through the post yesterday and I'm really chuffed with this. This is Universe 25th Anniversary Bruticus gifts yet. Well, Bruticus Maximus. I'm a big fan of the Combaticons. That's why I'm with this guy. See, there's the back of the box with them all combined. And, uh, Bruticus Maximus. Um, uh, I do have the original version, which was the Superlink or Energon. Not Energon. Yes, Energon. Uh, so, yeah, so I've got the Japanese Superlink version because that came in a gift set as well. Um, I never really opened that. Um, I mainly just got it and then put it up in my loft because I never just got around to it because that's what I'm like a lot of the time. So I might open this guy. Or I might just go back to that version, because I think that's probably easier to get back in the box than this one. Anyway, but I was looking at this earlier. I don't know if anyone knows this, but if you look at Onslaught quickly, if I bring him up to the camera there, just there he is. He's like, he's, I think he either thinks he's like Princess Leia or something, because he has really got a thing for Princess Leia, because his head has just got these giant buns on the side of it. Yeah, anyway, that was about my little interesting point of note. Right, let's get on to the main review. Uh, right, so we're going to, this is him. This is Universe Overkill. Now, obviously, a long time ago, he was one of Soundwave cassettes. Soundwave's cassettes, even. Um, now, then, I've got him here, actually, so we'll do a quick comparison. This is him here. Now, then, obviously, he is a hell of a lot smaller. There we go. Probably about half the size, but obviously, in bulkier, this guy is a lot more bulkier than him, because he's, like, thin as a rake. Uh, obviously, he needs to eat more. Right, <clears throat> now then, where are we going to go from next? We are going to, um, if you can hear my dad out there, he's talking to a cat, which I've also got one cat on my bed, I don't know if you can see him over there. Um, he's called, re a really frightening name, he's called Buttons. Um, I wanted to call him Ravage, but my mum wouldn't have it, so we had to get, we had to call Buttons. So there we go. Right, uh, just to give you a quick general thing around his uh, T-Rex mode. This is him. His uh, his right legs move like so. Uh, his jaws will open and close, which is pretty good. Um, his little arms do move. 
Uh, let's have a look. He's also got this giant rocket launcher, which if I fire it, it will take your eye out. Let's see if I can do this. I've done this. I've done this review twice, and I made a bit of a cock up with the camera. I didn't notice until I finished. So, and I shot this missile, and it went straight one of my drawers over there. It took me another five minutes to find the bloody thing. But I, I always seem to do that. Right, let's just fire this. Let's fire aim it at my hand over there. No, it's gone again. What is going on? Anyway, right, we're going to leave that there. Anyway, like I say, that could be a little handgun and sword or something. We'll put that down there. We'll move on next to trying to transform this guy. Now then, I've only transformed this twice. Once when I first got it out of the box, and then earlier when I've done this review earlier. So, bear with me. Right, we're going to do the easy bit first. We just simply pull the front of his body away, because it connects onto there for a little clip. Now then, we're going to open the feet right up, because the head becomes the feet, and the jaws become his little hips. And then we separate these two halves. Oh, God, if I can get, do it. Ah, there we go. And that's his feet. And then all I do then is get the little arms and we just bend them around like that. And then I straighten out the legs. Um, then I then you've got to unclip this front piece just off there, like that. It just lifts up and this uh, becomes a little weapon. And I'm going to take this tail off. You can leave it on, but I want to take it off. It does become a weapon as well. And it's just held on with a uh, peg, uh, pegs and plugs like that. I'm going to put that down. Um, it does move this tail, um, like I say, you can pose it quite a bit, but I'm not because I need to be able to get it in the back, uh, back in the box later. Right, so now then we're there. Now then, it's almost there in fact. We take these little white panels and we flip them once the arm's out of the way. Right back to the back. Now then, where are we going next? I'm going to turn it around so you can see it. This then becomes the front, or does it? I can't never remember now. Oh, I keep getting everything in the way here. Yeah, there we go, that becomes the front. We turn, here's, that is going to be this arm. Right, where are we? Because uh, it starts to get a bit confusing, because you've got to turn bits around every which bloody way. Right, that goes down there. These panels flip down. Uh, this, oh yes, this whole panel swings around. And then we straighten out the leg, and they're both on these little panels, and this one flips back. And clicks into place, sort of. Not very well, I admit. I just sort of, sort of stay in place, really, mainly due just to the tightness of the joints. A little bit annoying. Um, then on the leg, on the arms themselves, or the air legs, well, the T-Rex legs, these just fold back and become the arms. Same on this side. Ugh, can't run out of breath now. There we go. That's there, and that becomes his arms. Now then, there we go. And that is basically him in his robot mode. Um, he's quite he's quite posable. I mean, his arms move, he'll bend at the elbows, head will move, and his legs will move, and he'll bend at the waist, and probably you name it, he'll bend there. Anyway, the only thing I don't really like about this figure, if I just move his arm out of the way, is these legs. I mean, they have got this horrible, horrible giant leg bit just sticking out around the back. Here. I mean, his knee joint is actually right about there, because like the little blue leg, I don't know if you can see it there go straight into it and so it just looks like he's got this giant like huge knee pads on or something. I don't know what that's all about. Anyway, we're gonna put it in there. And oh there. So anyway, this is universe overkill. We're gonna put his little gun in his hand just to make him look a bit that that bit more menacing. And I'm gonna bring on overkill again so we can see him he is really good. He's, I mean, I don't know if you've seen my review of these cassettes. I did do them. We'll do a review of them. Um, but I, really, I do like this guy. Now, I don't know. Um, he only seems to fit. I don't know if I've told anyone this. He only seems to fit in the Toys R Us reissues or the set or Sound Blaster. But he won't fit in my original G1 Soundwave that I got when I was 10 for some reason. Um, not quite sure why. I think, well, obviously, it's just a bit bigger, I suppose. But I don't know why they made them like that. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up the review there because my girlfriend's on her way around. I'm going to need to do this one quickly. Um, have a good weekend. Hopefully I should be back with a review on Monday. Hopefully something nice. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.